Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another Comprehensive Counseling Initiative monthly video update. I'm Matt Fleck. And today we're with two gentlemen who represent YTRI and, and YTRI.org, a very popular program and curriculum and training program in, in Indiana and actually in very many, very several other states around the country. So we're pleased to have with us Mark Merrill, who's the regional program director, works a lot in the state of Indiana. So you're probably familiar with Mark and Bruce Bushnell, who's the Vice President of Training, who's also been a counselor for 26 years. Welcome to you both, and thanks for being with us. Um, and I'm just gonna throw out the first question. You guys gotta fight to who answers it, but tell us in a nutshell what Y-Try is and what you do. Okay, Y-Try uh, began about 20 years ago. And just real quick, our founder was a special ed student that was told that he would never graduate from high school or wasn't college material, would have a hard time keeping a job. Yet he's the founder of our company, has a six-year master's degree, and has sought after all over the country and has helped develop this curriculum where, where basically we teach social-emotional life skills in a very engaging way. And, uh, and we're a training company consultant. We consult to help people implement that curriculum. And, uh, and just a couple of things just to add to that. In my frame of what is why try, we answer the question to students, why try? Why put effort into school, to career, to education, becoming good at something or stopping a self-defeating behavior? The second one, we teach critical social, emotional life skills that will help you be successful in your life throughout your life. We call those the skills of resilience. And the third one I like the best, we truly help students look at their challenges differently. And their challenge becomes the reason they succeed and they don't shut down, quit, or hurt themselves. And that's pretty powerful. If we can truly let students see, put on different lenses to see their challenges differently, that, and, and that's the reason they succeed. And so, and it's for all students. We're in all, when you do the pyramid of interventions, we're in tiers one, two, and three. I don't know if you have the numbers. I, uh, it's unfair to ask you, but uh, you're working with several schools in the state of Indiana. Is that correct right now? Yeah, we've got a lot of counties all over, uh, very, very uh, kind of spaced all throughout the state. And, and uh, a number of years ago, our founder did a, a tour, a seven city tour, just going around teaching his skills of resilience and some of those things. And so we've been around for a long time in Indiana. And, and personally, I, I love it. I uh, can't get enough of St. Elmo's and, and lots of others there. So. <laughs> Uh, love, love the good state of Indiana. That's great. Well, our friends at Indiana Youth Institute, I think, brought your uh, uh, organizer uh, and founder to Indiana. So we're grateful right. for them for doing that. Yeah. He so was, he was and I did introduce, I'm an old basketball, basketball coach, an old basketball coach, and I've watched Hoosiers probably <laughs> maybe 55 times. And I actually got to go to the gym where that was filmed. I trained a group in Indiana. It was awesome. Isn't anyway, that awesome? We're going to get yeah. carried away and not get you to your state. <laughs> well, we, we do love the state of Indiana. That's, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. That's great. And we, we love Lily Endowment for being able to support your, the initiatives that have brought you here and, the, and all the good work. Do you have a particular story that you want to share with a school with, with your working either in Indiana or in other states with Y-Try? Mark, why don't you go ahead and answer that with the, the young lady from the middle school on Jeopardy? Yeah, yeah. One, one of my favorites was, uh, was down south uh, in Rockport, Indiana. Uh, I've got a counselor that uh, as she was looking at, you know, how, how she was engaging the kids and working with them, she didn't want it to be the exact same thing, you know, just sitting up and, and lecturing and, and sharing her slides and so she actually created a Jeopardy game where they would do this two, three times a week, talking about these social emotional skills of resilience. And the kids, it was almost funny because they, they didn't view it as social emotional learning or, or lessons. It was, it was playing a game, but all the while they were learning these great skills. And, and it really embodies a lot of what we try to do is, is make it engaging and, and teaching them in ways that's relevant to them. Because when they can make those relevance connections themselves, Right. Then now your intervention and your discussion has a completely different opportunity and impact. And that, that's one of my favorite ones that, uh, that I've loved. And she shared those slides with us and, and, and I talk about it all the time. So that's perfect. What has surprised you, if anything, with working with schools related to this grant or just in general? Well, the one thing I, I, I put down that I really, I mean, I thought about is that um, counselors wear so many hats and they are so busy and a lot of times uh, you get caught up in doing things that are non-guidance. When I was interviewed for my first job as a counselor, I sat in front of the superintendent. And I said, don't hire me if you want a pencil pusher. I want to be with the kids and I want to make a difference and change lives. And I had all my training and my master's to do that. And then two days later, I was hired. And a month later, I was sitting in an office and I was over the records and I was doing 
total paperwork and non-guidance. They signed me non-guidance. I said, what have I done? And so I think your foundation, what you're doing, your initiative allows, you know, but I don't know if it doesn't surprise me, but you're giving them the resources and the ability to do more guidance things that can truly make a profound impact on students. And that's what they need. So that's why I said I would love to have this in other states, you know, because we'd, we're, we're in all states. And I think every state would love to have a foundation like your foundation. But that leads to the next question, which is about collaboration. I think more and more schools through this, through this initiative have been able to reach out to organizations like yours and others in their community, like you mentioned the juvenile de- detention program, to, um, to kind of engage others in the whole process of school counseling, preparing students for the next step, uh, engaging them. Um, how do you have suggestions on how your organizations or ideas on how your organization can help counselors with that effort to collaborate and maybe even find more time to do the other work? Yeah, absolutely. I'll share counseling. Mark, as a program program director, may I ask you, you know, some of the things you do as a program director, but uh, uh, one, we try to create a shared vision together as we collaborate. If, if we can pa- be parallel on, on the things that we're, we think are important and we share that vision and we like to create this kind of attitude that you're part of our team. We're collaborating. And a lot of, I just had a lady the other day just called from California. She said, you know, you're a little bit different. I feel like I'm part of your team. I said, you are. And, and I said, I want you to feel like, and she said, oh, we do. And that's, so that's important that you kind of create that collaboration where you're, you know, you're really working in it. And then also I think involve other community members. We, our goal is to, to have resilient community. That's what we teach. Resilient parents and families, resilient staff, it spills down to the students and definitely, and then, and that's counselors. You've got counselors, there's burnout rate for counseling. We need oh, yeah. resilient counselors and then definitely resilient students. And so if we can collaborate with common goals to do that and objectives, boy, we can do some amazing things. And so uh, Mark, you can add that. Mark is a program director that helps in implementation. So we have good collaboration. Maybe you, Mark, anything you want to add to that? If we can work in your after-school programs, whether that's the Boys and Girls Club, uh, we've worked with the Marion County Center of Youth, uh, 21st Century Grants, and with the, the county, whether that's the, the county probation or uh, we actually work in all of the, the state-run juvenile detention facilities since so we're working with the Department of Corrections in Indiana. Um, but if we can work in those three areas, we're all working with the same kids. And no matter what, where they're at on that kind of spectrum of behavior, uh, we'll be able to have the common language of being able to seamlessly transition into some of these and, and hopefully transition back into um, some of these other situations where they're behaving better. They're, they're doing some of those things. And so that's my ideal implementation is when we can work in all three phases of those communities. Yeah. Yeah. I shared with you the story of the woman, uh, Gail Shriver, the, the counselor who used her PE department to help uh, convey the lessons from Y try. And she said she was talking to a student who was using the same language. Uh, from my tribe, is like, this is great. It's, that's it's it. that's common it. language. So yep. yeah, very exciting. I know some of the some of the grant initiatives, some of the um, the schools that have been in the grant, this is their last year. Some are going to be ending next year. Do you have ideas or thoughts on sustainability for from either you, Bruce, or Mark? Either way. Yeah, I'll share a couple of things, and then Mark, you can add to it. Um, I do think one thing, if if a program is tied to one or two people, I, I headed up a thing in our high school that was called the STEAM team with another a teacher. And we, for 10 years, it was amazing. We did something in our state that changed our state forever. We got national recognition for it, but it, or it was with students. It was a service organization yeah. called us. And, and, uh, but she retired and I continued on for the next two years. Then I came to Y try and the very next year it was gone. So to sustain something, we recommend that you have a leadership team, at least a core leadership team, whether it's in your school or your district, whatever you're doing, especially in the school, individual school, and counselors need to be a part of that. That is the most critical. You need to have counselors. They're influencers, and they have a, they do so many things that bring that all together. But when you have that leadership team, whether it's five, ten people of key, key people, you can help sustain it. And, and keep it going. And so, and that's part of what we try to do too, is to help, you know, we have an implementation model that has specific things that we try to help train or share to help that uh, particular school sustain it. And we say, we want to, we want to ride with you. You know, we want to, we, we don't want to be one and done. We want to begin be part of your team, like we mentioned before. Mark, anything you want to add to that? You know, I, I, I tell people all the time, a, a lot of what we do, it's more of an approach than it is a program. Um, when, when you talk about our, 
our new three R's, which is the relationship is the key. The relevance is, is kind of the key to the why. And then resilience is, is the end goal. Uh, with those three R's, any program, any intervention, anything you're doing will be more um, impactful. And, and so I, I talk a lot about how that's the approach that carries on far beyond when the, the skills and the tools and the programs and, and some of those things. I want to wrap up with just a question about resources, books, resources, individual websites, your website, of course, but you also have some free resources you might offer to some of our listeners. We're excited about this today to be able to share this. But one, ASCA is a great resource. They have a lot of free things. I go to it all the time. I'm working in California now in their department of education. The person over, director over counseling has built, they built a lot of things for this COVID and I like that. And so you can just go California Association of School Counselors or Department of of Counseling. And and then, um, but we wanted to share two today that we we wanted to get give them free tools that we think would be counselors I hope would be excited about. I'll let Mark talk about the book and then I'll, but I'll talk first and then you can talk and share about the book. But we have a, right before the pandemic, we were working on a, what we call a parent resilience guide to help parents, whether it's a single parent or both parents in the home, foster greater resilience in themselves and then also in their children and their students. And we were going to have a minimal charge for that, a site license maybe a school could buy and send it out. Where I'm presenting from today, our district is one of the largest in our state. They've sent it home to every parent, and it's free. And we're going to give that to you today, this actual site. It's open site. You don't have to put your name down, but it's a resilience guide. And here, and it, it's, a, it's virtual, and it's, got, it's pretty interactive. It's, it's got... It's, we're going to add to it, but we decided with the pandemic, we're not charging for it, at least through all the rest of the school year until wow. we, maybe Fantastic. Never, maybe never. And so here, here it is resilience guide. And, and we can send you a link to this. If you yep. have people, sure. But resilience guide.org just spell out. And that's, it'll take you right to it. Resilient Wonderful. lowercase guide connected.org. That's phenomenal. Wonderful. So we're excited about that. Mark, maybe you can share a little bit about, you know, share the book. That's, I was going to bring that up and I want, that'd be awesome if we can do that. You bet. Uh, yeah. So Christian Moore, our founder wrote a book on resilience called the resilience breakthrough. Um, and it's uh, we, we've made a digital version so that it can, so that it can be shared. Uh, we know a lot of people use audible and some of that, but we wanted it to kind of fall under our control. And so if you go to resiliencebreakthrough.com slash register dash now, and again, we'll send that website uh-huh. to you. Uh, that's a free resource that you can access the book on resilience that fits right along with the the concepts and the tools from the from the parent guide to resilience. That is so wonderful. We well, I, we speaking for counselors, we love free, so that's very good. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It's tough. It's tough out there, and we get it. Uh, also, just our website, whytry.org, has some really good information, things you can get, that, it, that uh, and there's sample lessons that are free. We have two curriculums. We have the Y-Try curriculum, which teaches, that we can say, the skills of resilience or those social emotional life skills, positive coping skills. And our second curriculum, that's relatively new, comes from the findings of the book, The Resilience Breakthrough, that, that we just gave out. And that teaches the source of resilience. Where, where, where is resilience really found? And, you know, a lot of schools have, cha- we all have challenges, educators, counselors, students, Students, everybody has challenges, but you can't be resilient unless you have a challenge. And we're going to, yeah. so that's, that's why it's our end goal. That's part, of the, that's part of the equation. We're going to have challenges, but the more we can be resilient and have the ability to bounce back. And, and we, we always say help students thrive after they've had a major trauma or adversity or challenge. You're not going to thrive immediately. Sometimes you're just holding on. You're, it's just enduring. But we, our goal is to help good students where they back, return to form and thrive. That's it. But you can tell I could go. I'm used to doing two-day training. <laughs> this, podcast could be, this podcast could be a long, long time. <laughs> well, I, I do hate to end it, but uh, I am so grateful for the information you've shared with us today. Uh, Bruce and Mark, thank you for your time. I know y is beloved in Indiana, and those who have not heard about it and now heard about it will take a look at your free resources and your website, and um, I think you'll get more uh, respondents from Indiana very soon. Excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate what you're doing and uh, look forward to helping any way I can. Anyway, thanks for your time, Matt. This has been great. Thank you both.